really difficult times and I would love if we could share in a moment collectively of doing a call and response to honor this awesome individual who had the courage to share with us. Okay, one second. All right. So I'm going to say something and then you say it. That's how call and response goes, okay? So, lit needs to my heavenly brown body. Blessed are the sissies. Blessed are the boy dykes. Blessed are the people of color, my beloved kith and kin. Blessed are the trans. Blessed are the high femmes. Blessed are the sex workers. Blessed are the authentic. Blessed are the disidentifiers. Blessed are the gender illusionists. Blessed are the non-normative. Blessed are the gender queers. Blessed are the kingsters. Blessed are the disabled. Blessed are the hot fat girls. Blessed are the weirdo queer. Blessed is the spectrum. Blessed is consent. Blessed is respect. And this last one I'll say because it's a little long. Blessed are the beloved who I didn't describe, couldn't describe, will learn to describe respect and love. Once again, Mark Agrahart. <laughs> Beautiful shit, right? Okay. So thank you, Kokomo, once again for inviting me to speak up here today. It means a lot. Um, so when Kokomo asked me to speak on Transcending Pride, I was like, okay, that's gonna be a little tough, but I'll try and tackle it. So I prepared something. Pride, what is pride? And how do we transcend it? I don't know about you all, but when I have trouble defining a word, I visualize. Is pride waving a flag, rocking a rainbow bracelet, liking the HRC on Facebook, being a member of the task force, working for a nonprofit LGBTQI organization, is pride frequently frequenting queer parties? Is pride having gay sex or showing affection in public? Is that pride? And if so, how do we transcend it? Let me tell you a little story, a little aside. I went to my first pride in the summer of 2004. I was so excited because it was a few days after my birthday and I was bedazzled by the floats and the openness and the colors and the disco and the sequins and the glitter and the ball balloons and thousands of people cheering each other on for just being gay. I've never seen anything like it at that time. And since 2004, I've been to over nine prides in a number of cities around the country. And every year, I grew less dazzled by the spectacle, the balloons, the glitter, the sequence. Why? Because I never saw the same celebratory faces the remaining 364 days of the year when my little queer black ass was in desperate need of community, of celebration, of sequence. Pride is too often associated with display. At a point in our history, this sort of action was a crucial tactic in our road of liberation. But now this display feels empty. It feels like a delusion, an apathy, that has taken over the LGBTQ community and all of our celebrations. I'm interested in transcending these singular actions to build something more sustainable, something ordinary, something radical. A community that doesn't disappear after the parade and after the party is over. I'm interested in a community that doesn't I'm interested in a community that doesn't elevate some lives over others. We are all valuable and deserve to live the lives we were given to the fullest. The, this transcendence that I talk about looks like all queer youth having access to a bed to sleep in at night. All gender expressions being valued and supported with access to employment and affirming affordable health care. When one's chosen name is validated as your name, when privilege is assessed and talked about, when people of color are not the only ones starting the conversations about oppression, 
I dream of this transcendence and hope that you all will organize and mobilize to build a community that is lasting, powerful, inclusive, and a place of healing. That is how I imagine transcending pride.